Lois, you know that right before we started the show, I made a huge move. I moved actually to your original hometown. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm in Chicago now. I fell in love. Uh, I'm from Los Angeles originally. I I miss being in Los Angeles. I'm, they, they're, we're called unicorns. Have you ever heard that term before? Yes. This is a huge, huge transition for me that I never thought I would have to have made. And you've moved huge transitions three times. Actually, three times in my life, um, but two times... Uh, oh, within, technically. Yeah, two times. Because I, I did move to Florida for a short time in my 20s and then moved back to Chicago. Oh, because I, I know the Palm Beach move. Oh, well, happened. yeah, that was Chicago to Palm Beach, which was major, major. Because I had been in, yeah, huge. And then uh, Palm Beach to Los Angeles, also huge. So today we're going to talk about something specifically about with regards to making a huge life shift and a move with regards to your current age and lifestyle. But mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to know at the front, what was the impetus of these big moves? Like every, I worked in an acting school. A major part of my job at that school was selling them essentially on classes. But I, that was an easy job for me because I believed in what we taught there. But what I really marveled at were these kids or adults or people who would make huge life shifts just to come to L.A. to follow and pursue a dream. But that's a good reason to move. So what is the impetus for you to move to Palm Beach or to Los Angeles? What made you make these huge life choices? Well, you know, I've been divorced for a number of years and then I sold my business and I really uh, just couldn't take the weather in Chicago anymore. I see. And I kind of wanted to start a new life. When I worked in Europe, um, I bought a tiny townhouse in an area called Palm Beach Gardens. And so when I came during the winter, when I would leave um, Paris or London or wherever I was working... Uh, I would go into Miami and then from Miami up to this little townhouse for three, four days before going back to Chicago just to take a break from the weather because it was winter in, in Europe and it was very winter in Chicago. Wow, so, sure. you know, I would go into Palm Beach to shop and to go to restaurants and all that stuff. And so it seemed to be like a pretty uh, easy move, which it wasn't because it uh, visiting some place and living there, you know, a couple different things. But two different things, yeah. Yes, and uh, so that's why I moved there. It was basically weather and a semi familiarity with the area. So then, then comes the the Los Angeles move, yes, which well, you know, another time we could get into what it takes to acclimate to a new place. But right now we're focusing on like making yeah, the big actual moves. the actual yeah. big move. So. Truth be told, ever since I was 16 years old, I really wanted to live in Los Angeles. I love the idea of the lifestyle. I love the idea of sunshine all year long. And I like, you know, the late people being laid back. And uh, I was very turned off by, you know, what I perceived to be the phoniness of Palm Beach. And so, oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah, so well, then somebody said to me, You don't think LA is phony? Sure. <laughs> well, sure. You know, I uh, I came to find that out, but by that time, it you know, I was a much older person, didn't affect me. But at any <laughs> that's rate, right. That's right. Yeah, um, that was the motivating factor. I knew Palm Beach was not for me, and so where could I live? Where I could live in an area and surroundings that had the kind of climate and the terrain that I loved. I loved the green. I loved the fact that. You know, in in um, Los Angeles, I can always tell. Yesterday, I was driving uh, to the theater. I went to see a play, and um, I could tell the people going into the uh, Hollywood film, the Film Museum of Hollywood, by whether or not they were wearing shorts. It was fifty three degrees here. You know, so um, wow. What I liked was the fact that we really did have seasons in Los Angeles. 
Um, and even though I felt far more comfortable in New York than I've ever wow. than I ever did in Los Angeles, New York weather just. I just couldn't do it. It would be the same as living in Chicago, and I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So that was that was that issue. So that's how I moved here. Now I am giving great consideration to leaving Los Angeles, which is so hard to imagine after having established yourself. Yeah. And you know, and at 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 a, at an age to also consider a huge move like that. Yes. So this is something that's a fairly new concept for me because it's not. I'm not close to this stage of my life where I have to <laughs> Thank consider. Goodness. Well, like I, you know, also another time we could talk about me really beginning to realize it's not gonna go backward from here. <laughs> you know, it's all moving. It's making the great exactly flump forward, which is another topic for another day. But um, thanks to having a friend like you and like looking at my mom and my dad's technically an expat or going to try to be, um, it kind of makes sense to not live out your ages here or in, well, like, in this country. I mean, there. well, there's a reason I want to move from Los Angeles after 25 years. And there's a reason that I'm not looking towards another state correct to move to well let's i want to one of the things we have actually talked about uh paris tangentially multiple times on this show i have yet to go paris is one of those towns i know i actually have not done anything europe in my life i don't even have a passport this is very much i know i know it's hard to believe it's one of those things that i know will come at the right time even traveling to multiple states came for me at the right time i've been able i've been lucky enough to travel for work in some aspects so which helps yeah it really it really does um and and it's just it wasn't a financially available tool to me, right? So um, Paris and, and or France is one of those places that if I go, when I go, I want to spend a month there. I know I don't want to go in and out. So you have talked about feeling your most alive in France. What yes. is that? Why? Well, I can go back to the very first time. I think I was in my early 30s, and I was married at the time, and I got into a taxi cab, and the cab started to drive, and it was February, and it was sort of kind of light snow when it, mm. when it hit the ground, it turned, it melted, it, was, it wasn't that cold. And when I started to see the buildings, I rolled down the window. And like a country bumpkin, I had my head hanging out of the window. Oh, my God, my eyes, you know, that are big already, you know, were like saucers. Oh, my God, I've never seen any place as magnificent as this. Look at the beauty of this gilding. And this was, you know, well before the millennial which is when they regilded it all their buildings, you know. So oh, now the gold I didn't is know still. This. Oh <gasps> yes, the gold is still very sparkly, but you know when I went, it was gold, but it wasn't patinaed. Like a, oh, it had patinaed, and this was you know so. But that's and still the, beautiful in its own way. Oh, it, it was, but it was no, it, it wasn't green. It was still gold, and it, and just the architecture. And then I got out and I start walking. And I'm walking and I'm looking in the in the windows of these patisseries and the I didn't know they just they just went. Oh on my and god, on I can't on. even and the in the chocolatier and the and the whole thing. I I was just I was be I was just beyond myself. Beyond. I was so I mean I practically skipped now. So I so I think I'm in London. <laughs> I go out in the middle of the street, you know, to fly again. <laughs> Oh, Lois. Oh, no. And people are looking at me, and then some. I step back to the curb, and some very nice gentleman said, Madam, you must go to the taxi stand. You see, oh, when he, and I thanked him. That's actually very kind. Very kind. <laughs> so, anyway, 
from that point forward. And then, of course, you know, I've mentioned this before. Uh, I took a lot of trips there. And then with a friend, we used to. And I shopped there for uh, antiques and artwork when I was doing my apartment in Par- in, uh, in Chicago and um, knew all the nooks and crannies of the interior design field. And then when um, I started working with the Picasso estate, right, yes, I was there many, many, many times during the year and stayed in different areas. And so then when I built my house, uh, because I had also been a lot to the south of France during that time, I, my dream house was a farmhouse in the likes of the south of France. So um, I hired a French architect and contractor and who really didn't do authentic and so I said, I have all these resources in the south of France, in Provence. If you would get the materials and charge me X percent over, uh, let's build the real deal. And we did. And this was, where did you build it? In Bel Air. In Bel Air. I Cal- see. Bel Air, Los Angeles, California. Wow. On Stone Canyon Road, which has the eucalyptus trees. Just like in, I have several photographs of a road uh, in the south of France that the eucalyptus trees form an umbrella over the road. And oh, magic. It was magical. So that is uh, how my love affair began. And so I think it was uh, 2018, I went with a dear friend to uh, Amsterdam, and because she had never been to Paris, to Paris, each for like a week. Sure. And then later that year, in October, went back to Paris for three weeks. I I just never tire of it. So for a very special birthday, uh, which will be three years ago, it was during COVID, and I did a uh, it was January mm. of COVID. So I found this incredible apartment in an area called the Marais, which is the third slash fourth arrondissement. It's not a fancy area, but it's a very hip area. Mm. A lot of people, a lot of young people. And like the Silver Lake or Echo Park of Los Angeles, yeah, yeah. kind of. Gotcha. Uh, mixed with a little bit of West Hollywood. I and see. S- yeah. And so you get a beautiful mix of people. And I got this extraordinary 1,500 square foot, two bedroom, two bath, huge apartment for Paris for next to nothing because it was COVID. And oh, wow. wow. If COVID didn't open up, I would have had to leave the deposit with them, blah, 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 blah. And the same was with the airfare. Airfares were dirt cheap. Wow. Yes. So, and I took it for six weeks. I wanted to see what it felt like to be in Paris as though you live there. And so... Friend Lupe came for six weeks, and another dear friend, Gabriella, <laughs> known as Gabby, came for three weeks, and we roomed, and if I tell you, did I love it or did I love it, I, can't, I, 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 I cried like a baby when I had to leave. Oh, I can't even imagine how sad we, that would be. We, you know, because... Gabby hadn't seen Versailles. You know, we took a driver out to Versailles. We took the train down to uh, Aix-en-Provence for a long weekend. But other than that, we spent all of our time in Paris, up and down, in and out, this museum, that museum, eating out, eating in. It, It was, I can't, I just can't explain. And I just said, Oh, if I could only live here, mm. at least for 
whatever might be part of the rest of my life. So Lois, mm-hmm. I think that's, well, you want to, you want to live there. That's mm-hmm. where you're strongly, cons- you have actually like entertained uh, becoming an expat a couple different places. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to talk about first before we, we know that France is the magical place and that sounds like a wonderful place for you to go. But what's the reason for wanting to leave the country? It's not so much leave the country in in terms of, I don't want to get political, but I don't like what I'm seeing. But it's for sure to leave Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I need to leave Los Angeles. And I hope the people... You're probably not listening or watching this YouTube, but Los Angeles has become a pit. The crime, I don't care what they say about crime going down. Are they joking? I can't even walk my little Jackie without pepper spray. Crime everywhere, smash and smash and grab, being knifed on the street people being gunned, neighborhoods that were once great are not, they're just, there is no neighborhood that is safe anymore. The homeless situation with the people that are not mentally well, you know, yesterday I went to Westwood to the Geffen Theater and I was meeting friends around the corner at a coffee shop. In that one block, There were four homeless people trying to make an approach. I don't want to live like this. I don't want to live being frightened. I am always frightened. I don't want to walk on the streets. This, and I'm not alone. Let me put it that way. Well, I am I not alone. I'm afraid to go to a shopping center. The Grove, not the Grove, Rick Caruso did a great job. Friday, late in the day, somebody was, uh, I don't know if they were robbed, but there was a gun, robbed at gunpoint at the farmer's market. The, the real farmer's market. Where you go to get meat, fish, produce. Yes. I know you to be a thoughtful person and anyone that's listening may come up with a thousand and you know, you didn't want to get political, but I think it's just fair to say, of course, you also understand the homelessness issue. Of course, you understand that they don't want to live that way either. That that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be solved and it's not being solved. One of the, I actually just did an interview for a magazine and they said, what do you love about your city and what do you hate about it? And I was talking about Los Angeles. And the homelessness situation is despicable. And that Los Angeles allows it to continue is is awful. And it, But it would be – you can want it to be solved and you can want better for those people that are on the street and unhoused. I do. I do. And also acknowledge – that it's not safe. It's not safe for a woman in general. And then it's, and, and it's, and it's compounded. I yes. was in um, Silver Lake and I, it was a less than a mile walk on Sunset Boulevard, a major street. It had just become dusk. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm a big girl. I can walk home. It will be fine. And I took five steps out of the place I was going to head towards my home, and I was being pursued by someone that was on drugs. They followed me and started asking me for money and started talking to me. And I realized I can't walk home now past those two blocks, you know. I I feel I am being held prisoner. I understand. I feel that I'm in in a community that, you know, is looking at the assailants as the victims. Instead of the assailed. Right. And I I used to be a pretty liberal person, but I've gone way center. I think when under duress or under uh, feeling unsafe, I can can understand that. And I am not. uh, To say I am angry is an understatement. 
to pick up and move as is, as the solution shouldn't be the case should not have to be the case but maybe it's a blessing in disguise I think silver lining of it could be that you have it could the means be. the means to go to a new place. It's a it's available. So how does one it, it a if I had my druthers I wouldn't leave Los Angeles, but I can understand why you want to. And and so what makes Paris or France it, it almost seems like it would be impossible to go to no. to retire and, there. Well, this is the thing that um you know it, it it can really sound extremely overwhelming. And, you know, um, just quickly, there was a, there's a lovely, charming couple in their early 50s. Oh, they are the sweetest people. And they live here and they decided that they wanted to try living in Barcelona for two years. And so they picked up, they have a house. I don't think they rented the house. Maybe they did, but I don't ever see any cars there. And they found a facilitator, somebody that uh, works at giving uh, or finding, helping people that want to move to a foreign country and help them with all of the things it takes to do that. I'm going to so, stop you right there because mm -hmm. like, that sounds like wonderful that some, there's obviously reputable people. I also would be afraid of someone taking advantage of someone like you and and facilitating and taking your three thousand dollar deposit and then not ever coming back do you know what i mean well, like, like i'm course. afraid of and, a scam and, here yeah well actually what i started doing is i started um firstly you know i started with um facebook pages okay you know ec, you know ec, women expat women da, ba, 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 i ba, see ba, ba, ba. sure 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 and and so you know and and they lived here and they lived there and, and i said you know this is getting very complicated. And, you know, Paris is really expensive. I probably have to move to the south of France, which, of course, was very appealing to me. But then I thought, well, what about the museums? And what about, and then, of course, the big issue, what about medical care? Ah, yes. A big, big issue. So, I'm sure a huge issue for any expat. Well, it just so happens that um, for a number of years, France has had the best healthcare system in the world. Oh. But not necessarily um, in rural areas, the same as in the United States. I mean, sure. I've lived in Chicago. Uh, Palm Beach was a was not a medical place you wanted. It's not a place you wanted to get sick in. I and see. Los Angeles, two very fine medical cities. Yes. So, but once you get out into rural areas, you know, it, the medical attention isn't as good. So I began to look at some, what else but YouTubes. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched couples talk about how they made the move and what they were doing. And then I ran across this one woman who told her story, and she was actually a Californian. Uh, 30 years ago, and um, and she ends up being someone who uh, is, a, is in real estate and has expanded the business to be one of these facilitators. I see. That okay. helps. And so in watching her, as she's a woman a little bit younger than, well, a few years younger than I am, but, you know, certainly... Uh, no kid. And so she came out immediately with the practical issues of moving to France. And the first thing was because of age, you needed medical care. Yes. And therefore, you really have to be looking at um, Paris or um, Nice. Ah, now, okay. Uh, which, you know, I can't imagine that there's anything wrong with being in the south of France on the French Riviera. Looking oh, that sounds okay. That sounds fine, I guess. So, truth be told, I have been through Nice a few times, stayed at um, in Cap Ferrat, um, I think about four days. It wasn't all that long. I really don't know 
that area. If it were Provence in terms of the farmlands, and yes, that I, I, I know, I know many of the cities and villages there, but not the Riviera. I have really not spent much time there. So as I listened to her, um, you know, I, I watched several of her YouTubes. And of course, I always go, you know, to check. I don't order a thing that I see. You know, sometimes you see these really cute outfits on oh, Facebook. I got suckered during and, the pandemic. And, and Instagram, you know. Yes. And I go immediately to Trust Pilot. Are they in, you know, because, because they're, the it's stuff smart. is cute. It's smart. But, you know, I don't need to be giving people, or the, or the aggravation of where is it, where is it, where is it. So anyway. Sure. She got extremely good reviews. Oh, and wow. I, I signed up for a newsletter. The newsletter, you know, had interesting topics and okay. She seemed to be quite legitimate. Then I was at the hairdresser and um, a lady was admiring my Chanel ballet shoes. Ah, uh, so cute. And I, and I said, because mine are black with the gold toe. Ah. Uh. And she had a pair on that were beige and beige or something, and which I also have. And she said... Oh, I like your shoes. And I said, oh, they're, you know, they're very vintage. They're at least 30, 35 years old. And I said, gee, I understand that Saks is selling these for $1,100. She said, well, I wouldn't know. Because I, I have in, a shopper. <laughs> no, I have. I was in Paris last week and I bought a pair there for 980 euros. I said, well, that's about $1,100. There you go. Wow. Wow. So I thought. I wonder what it's like to be able to say, I don't know what something costs, but tell me that in euros and not equate it with what it costs in dollars. That is a different type of living, Lois. I, I think so. I think so. Right. So anyway, I said, oh, how was Paris? We start chit-chatting, chit-chatting, chit-chatting. She was there and she find out she has an apartment there because they have a business there and ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. Okay. So... I said, well, I'm thinking of moving there. She said, oh, best place you can live, especially at our age. You know, you are not invisible there as wow. you are here. And I thought to myself, well, I hadn't really been thinking in terms of having admiration walking down the street. I just want to be able to walk down the street without having pepper spray. Sure, sure. So <laughs> I mean, listen, it's an added bonus, though. <laughs> that I you're mean, not being hounded for the wrong reasons. You know, reasons. we get down to the real basics, okay? So... <laughs> so as I was leaving, she said, are you working with anyone? I said, well, I'm thinking of this person I saw. And she said, oh, she's fabulous. She's wonderful. She won't wow, remember the me. the odds, the odds. My sign. Here comes another sign. You know, me and signs. Yes. Nothing is a coincidence. And she said, she won't remember me, but, you know, because it was so long ago. But she certainly will remember my friend, so-and-so, and blah, blah, blah. And gee, I want to see more of you. And it was a very nice meeting. We had friends in common. And that was that. Wow. So, um, wow. I really, you know, when you start investigating and you see what goes on, um, now I'm not going to be here trying to promote France. I have not come to, a, you know, any kind of real decision. Um, what I'm looking at are all the statistics, and it's really fascinating. It's really fascinating because I really can live in Paris. Uh, purchasing property is expensive, but renting is some 40% less than Los Angeles. There you go. You don't Which need... is a good enough reason to leave in and of itself. The big thing is medical. It's 700% right. less. I'm sorry. What? Yeah. And you Jesus. see, they do, yes, yes, for everyone out there, yes, they do have socialized medicine. 
And if you don't think Medicare is socialized medicine, then I don't know what to say to you. Right. So let me go with this. <laughs> Apparently, it's not all that difficult to get a visa. Uh, once you're residing there for 90 days, you are eligible for their medical coverage. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. And you, as you know, a senior, you can get supplemental, which this lady gets for like $1,300 per year. So, I mean, this is ridiculously cheap. And, you know, transportation's great. Um, food is far less, blah, blah. Uh, there are a few things that are more, cost more to buy jeans there. But <laughs> here, um, so at this stage in my life, I was with the, with the wonderful friends I was with at the theater. Uh, my friend Tom said, I just can't imagine you with all that stuff to bring. I said, oh, no, Tom. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I'm leaving everything behind. I am getting rid of it all. I'm tired of dragging it from place to place, sure. worrying about it, having it re refurbished, having to insure it. I want to be completely unencumbered, completely free. Wow. I want to take my dog and me and maybe the ashes of my previous pets. I think that that's, I think you bring those things with you. That I wow. should bring. So that's where I am now. I will keep all of you informed as to the progress I'm making in doing this search and research. I'm not sure if I want to go for in the first year, maybe for six months oh. and then back to the States for six months. All of it is up in the air now. It's still pretty overwhelming, but what I am starting to do is I am starting to get rid of these things that I have been hanging around me. You know, I talk about the crime in Los Angeles. Well, all those wonderful handbags that I had, uh, Chanel and Hermes and Vuitton, I can't carry any right. of them anymore in right. the city. So about um, three months ago, I put... Um, Many of my pieces, mostly Chanel accessories and Chanel clothing, and a couple of smaller handbags up for auction. And they sold very well, with the exception, I cannot believe this, of Chanel's scuba jacket, which I, I will be showing you shortly. And now I have another group of handbags, uh, all Chanel that I am in the process of photo, you know, photographing and measuring. And Bonhams has already taken a look at them. And I'm going to be sending files off to the other auction houses to see how they feel about them. I do have one piece that I can't wait to show all of you because it is it's, there's only one person on the internet that it, I mean, it's only one piece on the internet at all of this bag. It was a limited edition back in the 80s. Whoa. And it is very special. So, wow. I'm probably speaking, Jessica, am I speaking out of line saying that we will be doing this show very probably in the next week or so? So, yeah, I think we're going to be following you on your journey toward France and the downsizing process and kind of going through and and I'd be interested to like hear a little bit about your life when these pieces came into your life and what they were and you know so I think we're going to follow you and kind of just yeah you know I think that's what we're going to be doing and following me and I will keep you abreast of the new information I find and um, hopefully you'll come along on this journey with us, yes? Oh, yes. And Lois, I was just going to say how sad I will be when you are officially 
uh, in France, because then it won't be so easy to visit you. However, how no, wonderful will it, will it be to visit you in France? I will say this. <laughs> if I can possibly afford it, I will very, I will really, really, really try to have a guest room. I have a cousin and who said he doesn't have a passport. I said, you better get one. Right. And I'm saying the same to you. I'm seeing the, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of, of my goal here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, well, Jessica, what yes. do you think? I think that's it. I think, folks, thanks for joining us uh, as we talk about this and kind of getting real as to the state of things. And And Lois, I appreciate you being really candid about what you're going through and all the reasons why uh, not wanting to be in Los Angeles or this country makes sense. Makes It makes me sad. It makes me very, very sad. I think two things can be true, right? You can mourn the loss of a life that you are enjoying that isn't the same anymore, while also feel excited about the opportunity that's ahead of us. I think, I think also you're a really wonderful example of not stopping just because you're at a specific age or have specific obstacles. That is very inspiring. If you have a story to share with us, if you are an expat or if you're considering leaving the country, if you're my age and have just made a recently big move, I'd love to hear from you as well. There's several different ways you can get in contact with us. The easiest is just commenting below. If you're watching us on YouTube or you can leave a review, we'd love to hear from you there on the podcast space. Uh, you can email us at silverandsensational at gmail.com. You can also find us on TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook at Silver and Sensational. And if they're watching us on YouTube, Lois, what should our friends do? Well, firstly, please subscribe if you have not already. I've said this before. So for any new people watching us, subscribing does not cost you anything. No one's going to bug you, but it certainly helps us in also please share us with your contacts and hit like and the little bell that'll let you know when we have a new episode, but we usually drop every Friday. And I thank you immensely for joining us and please join us again soon. And thank you, Jessica, for being just the most wonderful co-host and producer. It's easy with the likes of you, Lois. Thanks, folks. We'll see you next week. You bet. Bye now. Bye. Thanks so much for watching us today, and please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode. <laughs>